So we're just about done with our coverage of associative containers. And we've talked so far about ordered associative containers, which are map, multi-map, set, and multi-set. And all those, as you undoubtedly recall, are all based on balanced binary trees, which use the less than comparison functor to order the elements in the binary tree. The last thing we're going to talk about, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because once you understand the ordered associative containers, what I'm about to talk about is pretty straightforward. What we're going to talk about is the unordered associative containers. And as you can see, there are four of them, and they mirror the ordered associative containers one-to-one. -one. So there's an unordered set, which is like set with one important difference. There's an unordered multi-set, an unordered multi-map, an unordered map all of which are like their ordered equivalents with one big exception. And the big exception, of course, is that these particular containers are not implemented using balanced binary trees and don't use the less than operation to do the comparison to figure out where their elements go into the tree, because there's no tree. So instead, what they're going to do is they're going to use hashing. And again, I, I kind of went over this before when we did the synopsis of the implementations of these different containers. But basically, what they do is they use a hash function. The hash function is something that, that uh, you can define, or you can just use the one that comes built in for that particular type in STL. And there's also, of course, a couple of other functors that are required to check whether something is equal to something else. And that's used in case two values hash to the same location in the hash table, then the equal to operation is used to disambiguate things that hash to the same location. But other than that, all the other semantics are the same. The unordered multi-set and unordered multi-map are going to allow duplicates, whereas the unordered set and the unordered map are not going to allow duplicates. OK, so let's take a look at an example to illustrate this. Here's our example. The example will demonstrate unordered map, but it's the same difference for all the other ones we looked at. And uh, in an unordered map, keys have to be unique. Even though that we're not using a binary search, they still have to be unique. That's just the semantics of map versus multi-map. And of course, remember that the keys can be whatever data type you want. They can be strings, they can be ints, they can be floats, they can be employee ID numbers, whatever you want them to be. And therefore, the maps are more general and more powerful in lots of ways than things like the sequential containers, like vector, dec list and so on. Here's what the template signature looks like for an unordered map. As you can see, this has even more stuff than map did. Uh, so it takes the key and the value template as before, or the type name as before. But unlike map, which took a comparison functor, which defaulted to less, for an unordered map, the, the way that we compute which bucket a key goes into is by using a hash function. And it turns out that there's, this is a great example of template specialization. They have template specializations for a whole bunch of, of obvious specializations for hash. So we have hash for integer, hash for string, and so on. And then there's, of course, a generic hash function that does some magic for arbitrary types. But you can also define your own hash function. If you know something about your data that allows you to do a more efficient hashing than the one that comes built in to STL, then you can go ahead and define your own specialization. And of course, the compiler will pick that for you. So that's a good example of where template specialization comes in really handy. And then the, the fourth parameter is the predicate that's used to determine whether two elements that hash to the same location are equal or not. And that's just the equal to functor, which we'll talk more about shortly, which checks to see if two values are equal. And then finally, as always, we have a, an allocator, which is used to allocate memory, and it defaults to the one that works with global operator new and delete. So what are some of the characteristics of an unordered map? They're pretty much the same as the characteristics in an ordered map, in that you don't invalidate iterators if you add new elements. And if you erase elements from an unordered map, you also don't invalidate anything unless, of course, you were, invalid, you were erasing the thing that you had the iterator pointing to. All right, so let's take a look at a use case. And this use case is going to look very familiar to you by now because it's more or less what we had before. 
uh, it's going to be the same basic input and the same basic logic, but we're going to have to add another step to do another thing. So as you can see, we're going to have ourselves a word list, which is a vector of strings with the famous phrase, now is the time for all good people to come to the aid of their party. And then we go ahead and make a word map and we will then have an iterator that goes through and indexes into the word map using the word and then increments the count. So this is the clever associative array technique we talked about before, where it's gonna go ahead and increment the count for every time a word appears in the word list. Once we've got that, we print the results. And then, just for kicks, we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a vector, and it's gonna be a vector that will uh, be a vector of a pair of string to int mappings. So what we're gonna do is we're basically going to go through the word map, and we're gonna have basically a, uh, these are pairs, and we're gonna go ahead and do in place back on every element in the word map. So we're gonna basically make our vector contain these pair of string to int mapping. So it's basically gonna be the contents of the, of the map. Once we, and another way we could have done this, by the way, we didn't have to do it this way, we could have used standard copy and we could have copied it like this. And in fact, we probably also could have done something like, whoops, we could have done this as well. We could have said um, word map dot begin, word map dot end. And that would have also initialized things. So you can see there's a, a whole bunch of different ways of doing this. Maybe we'll stick with this one because it's even more concise than the other stuff. In this case, we're just letting the constructor of vector take the iterators to the beginning and end of the map and throw them into the, the vector's contents. When we're all done, we're gonna go ahead and sort the vector. Because remember, an unordered map doesn't actually store things in sorted order. It just stores them in whatever the hashing is. So then we're gonna go ahead and sort from beginning to end, and just for kicks, we're gonna sort in reverse order. So we'll use the greater functor. So now we're gonna have things sorted in reverse order. And then we're gonna go ahead and print out the sorted vector, just illustrating how you can do that, putting the count first followed by the word, using a range-based for loop. And then down here, we're gonna go through and count the total number of words in the map. And this time, again, just for kicks, we're going to use the, uh, the lambda function technique to do that. So if all goes well, let's go ahead and compile this code and see if we get the results that we want. And indeed we do. You can see here that here's the original output. And uh, as you can see, this is not sorted in any particular way, which is exactly right. Unordered maps don't sort the data. Uh, and then down here, we sort things in descending order by the key. And now when we print the results out, they're sorted from high to low based on the words. Now, of course, and then as you see at the very end, we count the number of words in the map and we get 16. Now, of course, if, um, if you really want your output sorted, you might as well use map to begin with and not use the unordered map because if you're gonna have to put it in the map and then sort it, you've kind of defeated the whole point. But uh, this is just kind of illustrating how you can use these various mechanisms.